what are the consequences of the fall is we only focus on our physical being. Now, a lot of that has shifted like from Jesus uh, being here until recently. So I'm not sure if it came in the age of enlightenment. There was a time before enlightenment where people thought about themselves as body, soul, and spirit. So they were a lot more connected to the totality of who they were and the fact that only the physical was going to die. And of course, that's the lie of Satan is you won't surely die because he knows our physical body is going to die. But he doesn't tell us about our soul and our spirit, what that kind of death would look like. In um, ancient Hebrew, unlike the fights that go on today with people who don't believe in Jesus, we say, oh, we, we know where we're going, right? And the lie for people today is, I don't think anything happens after the end, right? So I don't have to make decisions. I don't need what, what happens. You don't go anywhere. Well, eternal life has been known always. And so what they call eternal life is called the life of the age. Okay, so in ancient Hebrew, they would name a period of time by the characteristic of the time. And so when you look at, you know, in Moses' time, it was the age of Moses. Abraham's time, the age. Like when we look at the big covenants, they usually would identify that as an age. And um, so there was a spirit to the age. There was a semblance to what happened in the age. It's interesting that um, up until the fall, they called that the age of life. In other words, which is what you just said, the age of life. But guess what? From the time we bit the apple, do you know what they call that until Jesus' return? What is this age? Of death. It's the age of death. Okay. So there is nothing until Jesus' return that is called anything. We're living in the age of death. And then when Jesus returns, um, you know, and we have a new heaven and an earth, we return to the age of life. Now, the interesting thing about Hebrew culture was you could be in two ages at the same time because you're living in the age of death, but also in the age of Abraham, you know, and, and his descendants. And so they had this place that you could be in two ages at the same time, which for us is we are very linear in how we think about things. So when Jesus comes, he announces a new age. He actually announces the return to the garden, in essence, the return to the tree of life, which is where we walk and talk with God in the garden. So he announces that can be us before he even comes back for us to what we try to think is eternal life. You know, oh, now we're going to live forever, but before we work without him, the reality is we are, everybody is made to live forever. It is a matter of whether you choose death or life. And when Jesus comes back, there is still going to be an age of death and there's still going to be an age of life. And the choice that you make, you know, if you're going to live at that point in the age of death, death actually has no goodness left in it. And so there's no restraint to evil. All goodness is totally um, gone. And so like the context of hell is people are choosing that they want to live for eternity, basically in the state that, that God guarded the tree of life, so we would never have to experience. But there is that choice. 